Bonjour. Uh, welcome. This is uh, very exciting for us. This is our first live Instagram within the gallery. And uh, c'est une occasion vraiment spéciale de pouvoir tester dans le cadre de toutes les circonstances uh, qu'on vit mondialement, que vous, vous pouvez aussi être avec nous, peu importe où vous êtes, hein, et uh, de vous accueillir ici uh, dans une exposition qui est accessible physiquement. Donc, uh, bienvenue chez Pierre François Art Contemporain à Montréal. Alors, situé sur la rue Rachel et euh, nous vous offrons quelque chose de très spécial. C'est une exposition que j'ai organisée avec euh, Dale Hildebrand, que voici. So this is a very special exhibition that I've had the pleasure to organize with uh, Dale Hildebrand. Et nous avons décidé de réunir euh, dans le cadre d'une réflexion sur la peinture quatre artistes et je me suis rendu compte qu'il y avait quelque chose en commun au-delà de la question stylistique que va aborder uh, Dylan. Ils ont tous un lien avec l'Université Concordia. We're quite fortunate in Montreal to have a world-class university that are really practices, uh, really pushing practices within the medium of painting. And so within this uh, uh, body of uh, work, you'll be able to discover some of the uh, exciting talents that are actually either working Uh, at Concordia during their doing their masters or actually teaching also at Concordia. Et c'est pas pour juste parler de Concordia, c'est vraiment c'est un état de la peinture aujourd'hui et avec un propos assez défini comme vous allez pouvoir découvrir. Elle parle beaucoup de strates en peinture. Mais je suis vraiment très honoré d'être avec Dale euh, Debrand. On va prendre une dizaine de minutes ensemble et euh, la conversation va se poursuivre en français. Oh, oui, excusez-moi, en anglais. Alors j'espère que vous allez euh, euh, être euh, conscient qu'on n'a pas encore toute la technologie pour rendre ça de façon parfaite, mais on, on travaille là-dessus. Alors donc, euh, bienvenue. Euh, et je veux donner la parole à Anna Dell. Welcome. Is it a good time for me to remove this? Uh, so, um, yes, uh, welcome to, uh, to our exhibition. So uh, this um, show sort of, uh, sort of started as an idea some months ago, um, uh, near the beginning of the year, and uh, you know, Pierre-François and I, uh, and Francois and I sort of sat down and, and started talking about what could we do um, with respect to an, a, a painting exhibition. Um, With respect to uh, the Victoria event, it was it was a kind of an opportunity for us to do something together, and so the question arose: what kind of ideas would we explore? Uh, because of course, painting is a very large field, and um, you know there are any number of sort of uh, sort of points of view we could take. And uh, <clears throat> you know, Pierre Francois at, uh, at, uh, at one time sort of asked me what uh, what I would, I thought. The exhibition should be about. And so I started thinking about certain things that interest me uh, as a painter that sort of, uh, appear in my own work, but um, also sort of appear in some way in the works of other painters. And, and we were looking mainly for painters who had a connection to Montreal, who were here, who, who uh, were here at some point. Um, um, you know, Concordia University, as Pierre Francois mentioned, uh, sort of figures large in the exhibition. Um, you know, everyone in the show is either, you know, a current MFA um, student or a previous student or a teacher or even uh, Martin Gollum was a, was a, a BFA student at my board many years ago. So um, we wanted to kind of create a uh, sort of a, a little snapshot of, of what was going on with respect to a certain theme. And, and the, the theme for me was about like how a painting locates a viewer in a way. But you know, the, the person standing in front of a painting has a certain experience of, a, of an artwork, like a painting. And I wanted to sort of look at how, what are the different strategies that painters in the area are taking with respect to this question. So, um, uh, where should we go from here? Maybe, like, we'll start maybe uh, with Jackson Slattery, who's currently a uh, student at Concordia. This work, called uh, In the Air of the Night, I found really interesting um, because um, it really sort of questions the space. In some ways, you know, when we use photography and painting, there's a kind of uh, uh, sort of claim to reality that ph photography sort of makes because it's, you know, the idea, there's a conceit of photography that if it's true, you know, 
that the camera doesn't lie. Um, but you know, used in painting, there are all kinds of different sort of things that a painter can do to sort of skew that sense of truth. You know? And I think Jackson does a really interesting kind of way. There's 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 many different uh, um, sort of means that he does this by scale. You know, you have the objects located on the surface that are painted there. You know, he has like plates and vegetables and wine glasses. These are all true to life uh, size, so they're they're uh, they're at human scale. You know, the, the, those wine glasses are the true size of a wine glass, whereas the hand is comparatively very very large. So he's kind of he's shrinking the space. Um, between two worlds. Another thing he's doing is creating a sort of a disconnect between two different vantage points. You know, with respect to the photograph, it's kind of the gravity is operating, moving downward, you know, in the same way that it does for us. Um, but for the objects, as you can see there, they're, they're laid as though they're on a table, so as though the, the camera is, uh, is looking down. So it's a kind of a bird's eye view. Okay? Looking at some other pieces, you know, um, well, I mean, maybe we can go over here. This is one of my own paintings. You know, as I said earlier, I mean, Pierre Francois and I were talking about how, you know, uh, we could have like some sort of shared conversation. I also like to use, um, you know, the question of, of uh, you know, where is the viewer in this situation? You know, things are it's really that all the, you know, these kind of white shapes, these, these abstractions are kind of. I, I base them loosely on greenhouse architecture, but also there's a kind of a Bauhaus architecture. And then, you know, all of, all of the sort of the nature that's sort of painted in the distance, or what appear to be in the distance, because it's in a blur, you know, it seemed to be outside. So it really, it, it places the viewer sort of on one side of that sort of membrane or veil of reality. Looking over here, we have um, a uh, peer of mine from, for many years, Martin Gall, and uh, I met actually at Concordia as an undergraduate student uh, 20 some years ago. And uh, he's, he's doing something also uh, with space, too. He uses photographs, you can see in the distance there's a, a landscape that uh, you know, may or may not have, have uh, used a photograph, but it definitely has a kind of a, a photographic sensibility to it. And then converging on this sort of inner deep space, you have uh, you know, shards and, and sharp shapes, you know, a lot of diamonds and even what appear to be like teeth. There's a, it's a kind of a, a grinder, a visual grinder way you're, you're sort of almost sort of, uh, you almost feel as though you're in some kind of peril. Um, maybe we should move along here to this one. This is another one of mine here. It's called Pick Up Sticks. Here, you know, there's a clear you know, use of a, a photograph. Uh, again, I render um, these photographs in a kind of a blur. The idea is to, to, to play with the sort of the depth of field of, of, uh, that you get in a, in a photograph, naturally. Um, but here I can use it to, to sort of push that image into the background. And then you know, there's these kind of layers of, 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 of dirty wash you can see cascading down um, that sort of tell you that it's a, that it's a window, so to speak, or, or, or that there's a, there's a surface between you and that, that sort of image that's painted in the distance. Again, it's this business of trying to locate the, the viewer on one side of a uh, kind of representation of reality. Maybe let's come around here. We have a really large painting by Pardes and Miriam. Pardes is another uh, student at Concordia right now. She's making these fantastic paintings where where, for, where, where she's kind of using the paint in a, in a very, uh, kind of like using its natural processes to, to sort of um, kind of dovetail with, with certain uh, sort of stories, uh, illuminated, illuminated uh, manuscripts, Persian la manuscripts that she's using to sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of give life to the, to the natural formations of the water flowing on the surface. You can see a lot of these shapes are sort of abstract in a sense, but then, when you, upon closer inspection, they kind of materialize into sort of into to representational forms and silhouettes of uh, you see um, partial uh, figures and what appear to be animals and things as well. You know, if you look down at the at the bottom of the painting, also she's using some sort of uh, what I think of as sort of architectural motifs in a, in the sense of this. You know, could in, in one sense could be an opening where the space is deep, where you go into the painting. In another respect, that that uh, for figure ground relationship gets flipped, and, it's, and it can also be a column that's sitting forward, and then this moves deep. There's a lot of this that happens in Parnas's paintings, where where the, the the figure and the ground relationship are always kind of 
sort of hum humming in opposition with each other and, and they sort of dislocate the, you in, in your sense of the space. Maybe lastly here, we'll look at that as, uh, uh, what, I mean, it's a painting and a photograph, I suppose, in the same sense. There's, there's, a, there's a photograph mounted uh, in, in, the, in the, you know, behind in the frame, and then there's a, a glass surface which he's painted. Um, I find this really interesting because he's, you know, obviously this paint is on the surface. Uh, in a way, it, it kind of emulates what old masters used to do, uh, old master painters used to do, is they would make sort of uh, monochromatic, uh, sort of colorless cartoons or, or compositional drawings of their figures in space, and then they would apply, you know, many, many layers of colored glazes, and they bring out the, the color in that way. So he's kind of doing something very similar here by, by first photographing uh, colorless figures in spaces and then adding color to it, but, you know, he uses abstract shapes rather than and what you would normally see in a in old master's painting. Now, lastly, uh, for the, uh, I guess the last artist we have here is Alice Ryder. And her work here is very interesting because it's not obviously a painting, it's a video um, called Alternative Peeling. Uh, but, you know, in a way she's kind of, um, uh, quote, she's quoting uh, certain uh, motifs of painting or, or certain, a tradition of painting uh, in Trompe l'oeil. So, uh, you can see here in this film, uh, all of these fruit, at this point in the film, they're all sort of exposed, you know, the orange and the grapefruit and the mango. But at the beginning of the, of the, of the film, all of these um, different uh, vegetables and fruits have their peel, and then a paintbrush appears to, uh, to kind of like slowly remove all of those, um, the, the peels of those, those objects. In a way, it's like, you know, she's locating the surface as a, as a place where, where, like, you know, a peel is almost like a layer of paint. But, you know, instead of, you know, putting the, the paint on, she kind of removes it. And here you see a brush appears, you know, using kind of fairly simple green screen techniques, I suppose. She's just sort of painting abstractly onto this, this, uh, this orange in this instance, or this grapefruit. And, you know, rather than, though, you know, adding material, she's actually removing it optically. From, uh, from the objects. So, um, I don't know if we'll go to the... So here we have... Um, Smaller works in the back room here. Pierre Francois and I sort of felt that it was a, a good idea to, to sort of have some smaller works. In many cases, these are preparatory works for larger paintings. Um, in, the, in the case of Pardis's collages, we just passed by here. She makes these by um, she makes one by uh, in, um, she makes one of these, and then she she presses a piece of paper on it to make a companion piece that ends up being a, a mirror image of it. So the one next to it is actually a mirror image, or is based upon a mirror image of the first one. And so, and then of course she, she embellishes from there on and they become two distinct pieces. But a lot of mo motifs sort of arise in both, as if you can see the black silhouette of hands and uh, the circle shapes are still quite clear in there. And so basically she's using one artwork to sort of, it's almost like lighting a cigarette off of, off of uh, another <laughs> in a respect, you know, uh, you know, chain smoke. She's a chain smoking painter in that respect. She's uh, sort of lighting one painting off of another. Here you have another one of a dad's paintings. Uh, here you have a, 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 a figure in the background, and then he, and then these sort of abstract forms that he creates with the, with the paint strokes. You know, it, it, I, I make reference to the old master's technique. Well, for a dad, he's using a much more playful kind of, uh, I would say, kind of a joyful, uh, devil may care kind of uh, attitude with it by, by, you know, these kind of almost silly snake-like uh, brush strokes. You know, there's a kind of, uh, there's a humor that, that resonates out of it. Whereas, you know, you know, uh, with Rodin uh, sculptures, which these are based on, there's a kind of austerity that's there. And with that, for a dad, you know, he's decided to take out some joy from that experience. Moving along, another one of my own here. Uh, this one's called Blinds. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, these photographs that I kind of like paint in the background and a blur, you know, those are meant to go in the distance. And then 
what happens, uh, you know, these sharp horizontal lines, they come into very sharp focus and so sit forward. So there's a, there's a great deal of uh, sort of play between deep space and surface space. And, uh, you know, for me, I like to sort of set the tone with the, the blurry photograph so that I can kind of work in a kind of abstract sense on the surface of the, th of the, of the painting. And then those two sort of worlds interact with each other, um, you know, ideally in an interesting kind of way. So here you can see that all this, uh, what were in, um, initially um, thick painted lines uh, have been scraped away. And you can actually see the, the, the canvas um, fibers. Uh, underneath, because it's been it's been uh, scraped away down to the to the very uh, base. Maybe we'll go across here to these uh, really interesting collages by Martin Golland over here. Martin um, uh, uh, sort of starts sort of the, um, imagining his paintings in a process that uses uh, scraps of paper and. Uh, that are you know painted or, or photographs, and he, he just kind of he creates assemblage, sort of uh, preliminary compositions that he uh, he may or may not use. I mean, they're they're meant to be sort of standalone compositions, but they also oftentimes figure in this way uh, in the paintings. But you can see this, uh, you know, brushwork, you know, very rough, kind of almost dry brush, almost kind of like wiping his brush. Uh, sort of to clean it and in some spaces they they sit adjacent to to photographs and other kind of highly realistic uh, representations of things and so the, this world of, of the sort of the photographic re realness of, uh, of, of sort of photographic space is a, sort of put adjacent to this the you know kind of abstracted world of the of the brushstroke and so they uh, they have the uh, the effect of sort of coming into conversation with each other Well, you know, this is a really very exciting and uh, actually this is the first time we're doing this live and people have been waiting outside too. Uh, alors je vais remercier Dion pour cette présentation. On va essayer d'en faire d'autres. On va archiver cette vidéo, comme ça vous allez pouvoir la revoir. Et vous êtes vraiment les bienvenus. On est ouvert du mercredi au samedi de 1h à 17h. Et vous n'avez pas besoin de prendre rendez-vous. Mais sachez que pour des raisons de précaution sanitaire, uh, nous allons limiter à quatre personnes à la fois. So thank you so much, Jill, and I'm sure that we're going to be able to have more conversations yes, on other yeah. platforms. Et uh, je voudrais aussi remercier Léo Rivet pour uh, ses talents uh, cinéastes. Uh, on est tous en train d'apprendre rapidement comment s'adapter à toutes ces nouvelles technologies. Alors merci infiniment tout le monde. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day.